So as you saw, when it comes to camera moves, we've learned that we can pretty much keyframe any camera move we want inside the sequencer from point A to point B and any other point we want to add to any camera move. We can basically fly around the set and keyframe anything we want. And that's great. But I wanted to show you two other tools that are built in into Unreal Engine here, uh, one of which is the uh, camera rig rail, which is basically acting as a slider or a dolly. And then the other one is what we're going to see here is a crane which could be used for, for any crane move or any other previs. If you're using a Technocrane on set, for example, this could be a great way to uh, try this in Unreal, make sure that you have the room and the physical dimensions to pull off the shot that you want. In fact, I would say these two tools are much better for that kind of use purpose uh, for previs than they are for actually keyframing a camera move. But uh, we'll take a look at both. And uh, the bonus is when you are using these cameras or these tools, the, the rig rail and the, and the technocrane or the crane, is that you're keeping the camera moves based in reality. They're based on what you would actually find potentially on a set. And therefore, the moves will be kind of restricted uh, to what's physically possible. And that's kind of good because it keeps the camera move grounded and away from the uncanny valley uh, of camera moves. So let's take a look at what we have here. So we're in module nine. Let's go ahead and load up our uh, module nine sequence here. And we have our cameras in place. And let's take a look at what the crane and this like 180 degree slider move looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and previs that for you. You can just kind of see we have this slider move around tray. And we also have this crane uh, coming from outside into, uh, into the scene. Say the director, uh, this hypothetical director wants a shot that's starting from outside and in, that goes in through the windows and into the set. Well, we can do something for him like that and uh, we can do it for previs or we can do it for, for animation. So let's take a look at what that crane shot looks like. Click this button down here, the crane cam, and let's take a look from the start. So we're starting out here. We're outside. I don't know why we're pointing at a, at a lamp here, but it's just an example really. And we're going to hit play by hitting the space bar. And when we're coming down, booming down, we, we see our set, we see our actors. Now we're going to come through the window. Maybe we have something of important value over here for the storytelling and we frame that up. And, uh, and also to show the rest of the room, we, we pan to the right. And finally, we settle on our two shot wide of our two actors. And we've established a nice, you know, master, moving master shot, if you will. So that's just a good example of how to use the crane. And you can go ahead and take a look at how that was done. You have the keyframes down here. Uh, we're going to go step by step on how to set all this up. And let's take a look at our dolly shot. So if you twirl down that folder there, hit this dolly cam, and let's take a look by hitting play as well. So again, I don't know how these would be used in, in this particular instance. Uh, telling this story, these seem like pretty extravagant and extreme shots for this movie, for this shot, for this scene. But uh, I wanted to give something pretty exaggerated so you guys could see what it can do. So we have a very simple kind of 180 degree shot around Trey here. Uh, it seems like more, some, more like something out of a Michael Bay movie than, uh, than an indie drama uh, that this would probably be. But uh, you get the idea. So let's pop out and let's see how to create these two tools. So. Let's go outside, actually. Let's fly our way outside. We're going to start with the crane. And let's hide our cameras here. Let's actually put them in a new folder. Um, so go ahead and hit Shift. Click one. Hit Shift. Click the last one. That selects them all. And we're going to hit this folder over here. We're going to call these OG underscore cameras. Just so we keep things organized. And we're going to mute them. Let's go over here to the place actors. We're going to start with our crane. So what do we need to do? We need to search for crane. And we have our camera rig crane. So let's grab that, click and drag it into our scene. And by the way, quick tip, if this is a little bit too dark for you uh, to see what you're doing, you can just come up here into the lit mode uh, and choose unlit. And that's just another mode, just easier to look at if you're placing things in a dark scene like so. You can also hit Alt 4 to go back and forth between the two views. So let's go. So we've placed our crane and that's step one. Actually, one more thing we have to do right now is actually go through our uh, cinematics tab up here. And we're gonna start a new level sequence. We're going to our intro VC folder. 
We're going to go to our sequences, main. We'll call this module nine, module underscore nine underscore v2. We have a brand new sequence. And by the way, I just want to show you that um, just because we create a new sequence doesn't mean we can't go back to our old one. We can uh, go up here to cinematics and always load up what we had before. So you'll always be able to kind of go back and forth between um, this sequence here that I've done ahead of time. So you can check out what I've done and compare and contrast. So let's go back to our module 9 V2. Let's go to 24 frames per second like we did earlier. And let's go ahead and make it a 500 frame scene. Just like so. Okay. So now we have our camera rig crane in here. I don't like this name. Let's just call it crane. Keep things simple. Um, and then what we need to do next is attach a camera to this crane. So let's go to our OG cameras here. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. And we're going to duplicate Control C, Control V, our wide shot. We're going to rename this crane underscore cam. It's our crane cam. And we'll drag it down and attach it to our crane that we just created. And actually, um, let's rename this V2 so we know what we're doing. This is our V2. This is our version 2. Um, it'll be easier to select and find later. All right. So we can collapse our OG cameras again. We can make this, um, we can put this into a new folder called um, cameras v2. And again, we're, we're doing this just for the purposes of this tutorial. You won't need to necessarily do this, but I'm just wanting to separate things so we know what we're doing. And so, in fact, we can actually change this to cameras v1. Maybe that's a little bit better. Cameras underscore v1. So cameras v2, we have our crane and our crane cam, um, and they're attached to each other. But the camera's not here. So let's go ahead and make sure we have the camera selected. Let's reset the location and reset the rotation to default. And nice and uh, that put our camera right where it needs to be on the crane. So now when we move our crane and let's pay attention to these three settings right here, the camera will move with it. So crane pitch is our tilt up and down on the arm. Crane yaw is our pan left and right with the arm and crane arm length is our booming in and out. Okay, let's reset those three and let's see what the next step is. Well, the next step is when we want to keyframe a shot. So back like how we did on the previous module, we're going to go ahead and grab crane two and crane cam V2. I'm going to drag those into our sequence. There we go. And uh, I actually like to have the crane above the camera just to kind of keep the same hierarchy as we had over there. Now you'll notice that even though the crane camera has all these settings, the keyframe, the crane itself does not. So how do we bring those settings into the sequence? Well, we're going to go ahead and just click this button right here. This adds the keyframe for that property into the sequence. So we can click that button for all three of these. And now you see that we have those properties are, are keyframeable and changeable in the sequence. So I'm not going to go through the whole um, camera move that I that I demoed for you earlier. Just it's just too time consuming to go through in this tutorial. So I'm going to just show you how to do basic camera moves uh, with these two uh, components. The important thing to know is that you have a crane arm and you have a crane camera. And those two things move independently of each other, but they have to move together as well. They have to move, they have to dance together as well. And I'll show you what I mean. So maybe we'll just do a very simple push in here into our scene. So where do we want to start our camera arm? We want to be a little bit higher. And this is actually a good time to have a second viewport here. So let's bring up viewport two by going to window, viewports, viewport two. Let's go to unlit on this one and let's go out here so we can keyframe our moves and this one will have uh, that will look through the camera. But right now we're looking at the wall. Not a very interesting shot. So how do we adjust that? First off, we want to make our pitch. We want the crane to be a little higher. So let's go to our crane, make sure the pitch is higher than we want. Somewhere in that vicinity. 
we have this ugly uh, frame right here, or frame window frame in the shot. And so we want to move out of that. So let's use our camera yaw and go to the right, frame it something like that. And now we want to move the actual camera view, right? So in order to do that, you can just pilot it like this. Let's just say. And this will be our starting frame. Let's hit G, by the way. Oops. G. And let's just say that's our starting frame. Again, I'm not going to go through that whole thing. Just you'll see it's pretty cumbersome to do this. Because as you adjust one thing, you're you're going to have to adjust the others. So we found our frame with our camera. Let's go ahead and make sure we select the camera. Hit S. And that's keyframed our camera view. Now, let's just say we want to go 300 frames in. And we want to push in on the scene. So let's go with our crane arm length and we're going to push in. Now, you see on the right side, when we push in, we're also going up, right? Because that's the pitch of the crane. So we're going to have to compensate for that. So let's keep going in a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. And now let's adjust our pitch into an acceptable frame and maybe our, even our yaw a little bit and go back to the center here. And so now I just framed up with just the arm itself. You see that the three keyframes are there. I didn't actually touch the camera. Let's take a look at what that looks like. And hit play. And by the way, if you want to see this over here, you can go over here and just go to uh, allow cinematic control. Uncheck this so that when you hit play on the left, you're going to actually see the move on the right as well. It won't disappear. And so we're extending the arm in. We're also pitching down on the arm. And we're doing a, a, a little bit of a couple things that have to go hand in hand, right? And again, this is not a very fancy move, but I just want to show you the basics of how to work with these two components hand in hand. And say that we actually kind of wanted to come over here and look at the table on the left hand side before we go into the action. Let's go ahead and pilot our camera by right clicking the, the mouse button and find this table over here. Let's just say there was something important on it. Hit S. Again, always make sure that you're on the crane cam when you're hitting S because that's what you want to keyframe. You don't want to be keyframing uh, the position of the crane, just the camera. And another thing to be uh, aware of is that, and you'll see it right here, uh, I'll show you. Uh, now that we've keyframed, it's okay to, to mess it up, is that um, if you accidentally move the camera, see it on the right side? If you've moved it in space, it'll come off the crane. And we don't want that. All we want to do is pan and tilt. So I've keyframed it so it kind of went back to where it needed to be. But just be aware when you're doing those things that you're just adjusting the camera's pan and tilt. So we did a little move where we start on them, camera's pushing in, we stay on the table, maybe. Maybe we stay on the table a little bit longer, like there. So I'm going to hit S again, S again, sure you're on the sequence, around the table. The camera's still pushing forward to about here. And now at this point, we kind of want it to be back on our actors. And notice how I'm not selected on the crane cam. When you want to select that, hit S. There it is. And we keyframed our shot again. Let's take a look. There's something important on the table. We stay on the table. But, you know, story-wise, we want to make sure that that's, the audience knows what's going on. And now we're back on our, our two shot. So very simple there. Nothing fancy. Just wanted you to know how to do all these keyframings and how they go hand in hand. So you're going to want to keyframe the arm, the, uh, the length, the pitch, the yaw. Those kind of go hand in hand. And on top of that, you want to keyframe the camera itself so that you frame up for what you want to do. All right. So that's the, uh, that's the camera rig crane or just crane. And this is a kind of the workflow that I like to work with in order to see what I'm doing with the crane itself and, uh, and also the view of the camera. So let's go ahead and uh, 
Well, let's actually leave both of the viewports up. And we're going to go and check out the dolly or slider or camera rail. So if we look camera rig rail, there it is. Let's pop out of here. Let's actually close this viewport. We'll come back to it later. And let's do a little, very simple, you know, dolly shot. Um, maybe something like we're, maybe we're going to try and do something where we're like, just punch in on tray, like, like so on axis, maybe. So let's go over here to replace actors window. Let's look up camera rig rail or sorry, rail, and you'll find the camera rig rail. There it is. Let's back out here. And let's click and drag that into our scene. Let's hit G so we see it. There we go. And there we have it. We have the beginnings of a slider or a dolly uh, rig here. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Maybe we'll do something a little like a profile slider shot, essentially. Now you saw that in my demo that I had it going all the way around in uh, at 180. I'm not going to do that right now, but I'm going to show you how to deform or, or uh, kind of curve your track, if you will. So you're going to go here, you're going to select your rail here, and you're going to make sure that you have this uh, white line here. Make sure you're clicking on one of these handles, uh, this one specifically. And now you can move that handle one way or another, and you'll start curving the track. and. Um, deforming it to your liking. So that one is going to be the curving of the track and this one's going to extend the track. So it's kind of like a trial and error here, but you know, you can kind of get the idea of what, what needs to happen. And then on this side, same thing. So we might want to move this one this way. Right around there. Okay. That's, that's good enough for now. You get the idea of how to do this if you wanted to extend it. We'll do a little arc on, on tray here. Okay, so same thing we did earlier. We're going to want to create a new camera or duplicate one of our old ones. Let's go to cameras V1. And let's duplicate close-up tray. So control C, control V. We have a close-up tray two here. Now we're going to call this um, dolly cam V2. And uh, down here, uh, under the rig rail that we created earlier, we're just going to call this Dolly. Let's go ahead and collapse all our folders like we always do uh, with our trick and cameras two, cameras V1. Dolly will bring this into our cameras V2 here. And we'll also bring our Dolly into cameras V2. I actually accidentally renamed the wrong camera or I brought in the wrong the wrong thing that I needed and I'm undoing that Let's start over so we're going to go ahead and grab the dolly cam v2 bring it into our cameras v2 folder here and then also the same thing with our dolly that we just created and now we want dolly cam v2 to be attached to dolly just like we did with the crane and so we have the two are kind of connected now. So if I move this, you'll see that the, the camera will move with it. Uh, and just like we did on the crane, we're going to want to go ahead and reset the location and the rotation. So you'll notice this time that it's not perfectly aligned with the camera plate right here. And that's just kind of a glitch uh, that's built in uh, right now to Unreal. Don't worry about that. We can just kind of adjust that to our liking and make sure that it stays where it needs to. So let's go ahead and rotate it and place it kind of where we like it. Just so it looks accurate to us. Let's see. Somewhere in this vicinity, you know, just eyeball. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's really an aesthetic thing. I think somewhere in this vicinity is pretty good. So now that that's parented, we can take a look at our dolly tools, our rail controls also. Um, I'm calling it dolly interchangeably. Uh, that's kind of what it would be called uh, on set. So a dolly or a slider. So um, just when I'm saying dolly, just know that that's what it's, we're applying that to the rail or the camera rig rail. 
So under the rail controls, we can go ahead and see that we're going to move it from one end to another. So don't worry about the camera not following um, the orientation of the plate. That's OK. That's what we'll be doing later. Anyways, for now, uh, that's just how you move the camera from one end of the rail to the other, just right here. This is really the only control you need to look at. How do we keyframe this? Well, same thing we did with the uh, crane. We're going to want to drag those two things into our sequence over here. Let's go ahead and put these two in a folder. We'll call it crane. And uh, we'll bring in our new dolly. And dolly V2. Drag that into here. Very nice. And now we can keyframe um, our move. So you'll notice again, we don't have the exposed parameters. We'll do the same thing we did earlier. Let's go to zero on the sequence here. And we'll make sure we are hitting this keyframe button right here to make sure we expose those variables in the sequence, just like so. So now we can move it. Let's go back to zero. And same thing as the crane is that you're going to want to keyframe these things individually. So one thing moves the camera, the other one uh, would move the, the pan and tilt of the camera. So again, let's go to our window. Let's bring up viewport number two. Let's go into our scene here. I'm going to leave it unlit like this just to kind of help with performance. And we're going to look through our Dolly Cam V2. So here's Dolly Cam V2. Not quite a shot that we'd like here. Let's do something a little tighter. Um, let's click on here. And let's make sure it's like a, maybe a 55, maybe even a 65. Change it to a 65 mil on the lens. Let's tilt up. Let's find a nice close up on tray here. OK, that's a good starting point. Let's go ahead and hit S. And let's uh, go to, to, the five, to the last frame, 500. We're going to move the camera all the way to the other side. So we're going to hit one here. So the camera moved. And if we drag through our sequence, you see that we're, we're moving our camera to the other end of the rail. And as we move, we're going to want to keyframe the pan and tilt of our camera. So right around there, we're starting to lose tray. Let's refocus it somewhere in that vicinity. Hit S. Keep going. Hit S again as you reframe. And then as we get towards the end, maybe like around this vicinity here, we're going to reframe again. And at the very end here, let's go to the 500 just to make sure we're there on the dot. We'll reframe for, for somewhere in there. And these, again, are just examples for us to look at, not necessarily shots that we would do for this scene. You know, they're, they're a little extravagant, but they get you the idea. So let's take a look at what we've done here. We're going to hit and play. Uh, and actually, when it do that same thing we did earlier, we're going to turn off Allow Cinematic Control so we can see our shot on the right side as well. And you'll see the camera is moving off of the rail. Don't worry about that. That's just because we moved it around earlier. It doesn't have to be perfect. The important thing is that they're going to hand in hand. So when the rail's moving, the camera's moving with it. And it actually doesn't move off as much as you think. It's just because that's where we said it earlier. All right, so that's pretty much the gist of these two tools. Truth be told, they're not what I would recommend to create camera moves, because you could say, hey, Kevin, why wouldn't I be able to keyframe this normally? Well, you certainly could and probably be way easier than having to move to keyframe two things at the same time. And kind of as you play with one, you have to play with the other. And the reason why I would do this would be for, like I said at the beginning, great tool for previs, great for, you know, if you're actually using a dolly on set and you want to make sure that the shot's going to look good from so-and-so angle and from so-and-so distance, then you can do that. And you can do it pretty accurately as far as like distances and dimensions and all that. And I'd say that's the best use case scenario would be for that, for previs. But also, you know, the bonus of you using this in engine would be to just keep things pretty grounded and pretty truthful to what it would be uh, if you had to do these shots on set. So uh, if we did have a dolly grip pushing this camera and we were coming on this, we were doing this curved track like so, and we had a camera operator that had to 
frame up the shot as we went through, maybe it would look something like this and less robotic. See how it's not like perfect. Um, maybe you want perfection, but maybe you don't. And this feels a little bit actually closer to a non-robotic, more human move than it would if you were to do this with just keyframes. So just the food for thought. Um, now you know how to use those two tools. Uh, they're especially powerful for previs, but also add uh, a little bit of um, groundness or, or reality-based camera move stuff uh, that you might want in your shots. So uh, we we now know how to previs complicated shots with techno cranes or dollies, and we were able to determine that we needed a certain amount of room or whatever to pull off the shot. And this is a, a great tool for all of that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at another way to add some subtle camera movement to break up an otherwise pretty static shot.